is now. And welcome to the SVK Crypto Podcast. 15 minutes of crypto failure. My name's Charles Story. I will be your host the next 15 minutes. We're coming live from the city of London, so let's get down to business. On today's show, we've got a slightly different structure. We have the CEO and co-founder of a London-based ICO by the name of Rblock. We're going to be speaking with Luke Shipley, and he's going to be bringing us up to speed with what they're currently up to, where they currently are at the minute, and what Rblock are doing for the space. But before we get into it, let's go through the prices real quick. So Bitcoin's currently trading at $10,841, down 4% in the last 24 hours. Bitcoin's had an interesting 24 hours. We've had a lot of different stories coming out. A lot of, you know, as we were speaking about yesterday, one of the stories of the World Economic Forum in Davos, a lot of negativity coming out. We saw the price kind of on the back of that go from 11625 down to a low in the last 24 hours of 10533 steadily climbing back to $10,841. Bitcoin's dominance at present is 34.4% of the current market cap, which is $529 billion for the crypto space. Ethereum is currently trading at $1,039. Ethereum is also down 2% today. Um, Ethereum's high points were $1,067, falling down gradually to around $1,003 and then slowly making its way back up to the current price of $1,039. Ethereum is really interesting at the $1,000 mark because it's kind of, you know, where does it go from here? Does it go rocket up to 5000 because you can have all the all the users, all the people using ICOs in the Ethereum network? Where's Ethereum to go from now? And I'd be really interested for your views of Ethereum by the end of play of 2018. Is it, an, is it a, a solid project? I think it is. I, at SVK Crypto, we believe in Ethereum. And it's interesting because you have all these ICOs coming out of Ethereum and we didn't really see the price when Ethereum was trading around $400 go up massively. You had all these big ICOs raising hundreds of millions of dollars and the price was very stable. Obviously now we've had a bit of a jump up to the $1,000 mark. Where does it go from here? So let me know your thoughts on that one. Cardano, Cardano is currently trading at 60 cents. That's up, oh sorry, that's down 6% today. The high of Cardano was at 65 cents. Uh, gradually falling down to around 56 cents and stabilizing at the current levels around 60 cents. Stellar is currently at 60 cents. That's down 3% today. Um, we saw a pretty a pretty average day of trading. I mean, not not a lot of not a lot of um, you know, not a lot of change in today's um, prices. You know, for crypto anyway. It's, as I said, it's down 3%. We saw a low of around. Um, we saw a low of around 58 cents going up to 62 and coming back down to kind of 60 cent level. Neo is currently trading at $132. That's down 4%. Um, we saw Neo have a high of around $140 going down to around 126 at one stage. Very interesting level. Then going or averaging out to the current price of $132. Digiax.dao, Digi sorry, so you have to put, bear with me here. Digiax.dao, and the tokens of this is DGD. Um, this is one of the highest coins of the top 100 today, percentage wise. That's up 30%. That started the trading day in the last 24 hours at $185, making its way up to a high of 282 and then stabilizing at $245. So it's had an impressive day. Um, one great thing I'd like to say as well, before we get on to the next part of the, well, before we get to the interview, is in summary, for what we're seeing today and the current levels we've been looking at, we're at a very interesting time, as always, in the crypto space. With the current market cap at $534 billion, we're just getting started. And I get asked, I get emailed probably, I don't know, 10 to 15 times a day with people asking me, is it a good time to invest? Is it not? And we are just at the beginning of this. And I really mean that. This market is just getting started. I speak to people who are, you know, part of exchanges. They're being backlogged for days, whether that be institutional type exchange, whether that be, you know, a retail type exchange such as Coinbase, such as uh, Binance. People are eager to get in. And at the minute, the space is not built with the correct infrastructure to allow everyone in yet but we're working on it and we're going to get there so with that in mind let's jump to the interview 
So on today's show, we've got Luke Shipley, CEO and co-founder of R Block. So Luke, how's it going? Yeah, very well. How are you doing? I'm doing great. I'm doing great. So what have you been up to the last couple of days? Because I remember you saying that you've been absolutely ram-packed. So would you be so kind to run run us through a couple of days in, in R Block at the minute? It's it's crazy uh, <laughs> at R Block at the moment. It's, uh, it's it's been meetups every evening and uh, trying to stay out of so many meetings in the day. Uh, <laughs> we're, we're building up for our, our crowd sale, which is very soon. So it's it's absolute madness, to be honest. Great, great. And um, would you be so kind? Maybe take us a step back, give us a high level overview of what our block really is. And um, for anyone that doesn't know out there, just kind of quick introduction. Sure. So. Our block is a semi-anonymous, decentralized hiring network, which is powered by a blockchain-based referencing DAP. Perfect. And how long has this project been in the pipeline for? How long have you guys been kind of, you know, working on this? Is it something fairly new? Is it something that you've been, I don't know, kind of creating in your mind for a little while now? Yeah, it originally came about kind of two years ago, and it was a... Uh, dreamed up as a, a piece of privacy software, um, trying to help people protect their data when interacting with companies and uh, going about um, the different recruitment processes. Uh, and then it really picked up its pace last year, um, about a year ago, when uh, we went full time on it. And uh, it's expanded out to uh, visions of, of being a, an entire um, hiring network. Great. And um, where, where do you kind of see our block, let's say, in a year to two years down the road? I know it's obviously quite hard to, to give your your where you see it, but what's your vision for our block? Um, we see our block as uh, a place where people can um, comfortably own and store all of their work-related information, all of their work-related data. Um, somewhere where people will uh, request that companies go if they want to access this information and uh, a, a generally uh, trusted um, store of proven work histories uh, in which workers are, are comfortable there it's, uh, it's, the, it's the best place for them to be holding this kind of information of course, and due to the blockchain, obviously I've read the white paper. Due to the blockchain, you guys are, you guys are basically securing the sensitive information that would be referencing, kind of in broad strokes. Would that be fair to say? Yeah, yeah. Generally speaking, yeah. Perfect. And look, kind of just a general question here. I mean, how do you, you know, how do you see the blockchain changing the recruitment industry itself? Um. Well, it's got a lot of potential use cases. There's uh, lots of different companies doing some interesting things and uh, lots of very good things. Uh, we believe fundamentally because um, there's, a, there's a big lack of trust in recruitment. Uh, there's, there's various uh, problems and, and um, uh, shortage of trust between lots of different relationships. Uh, so that's why we think that there's quite a few companies rushing to create solutions in this space because at, at its uh, core, blockchain is a trust mediation technology, something which helps uh, people to interact peer-to-peer -peer, uh, without a middleman. Um, so it's, it fits very, very nicely with the, uh, the issues we face. Perfect. And would you be so kind to let listeners know about the recent advisors you have brought onto the project? Yeah, sure. So um, we're we're lucky to have some some really cool advisors involved. Um, we're working with uh, Keith Tier, who's the um, ex co-founder of uh, TechCrunch, EasyNet Net Names, uh, to which reached unicorn status. Uh, he's been helping us, but has made uh, lots of really useful introductions, but also has been helping us refine the uh, direction of the product. Um, we're also uh, being advised by Fabian Vogelsteller, who's uh, uh, the original ERC20 proposer who uh, worked on that along with Vitalik and is a long-standing um, lead dev at the Ethereum Foundation, also created some really cool stuff, the, the Mist browser, Ether wallets, Web3.js, 
um, who's been helpful with um, uh, us making the right uh, blockchain choices. Um, we're also advised by a lady called Alexandra Kelly, who's the who grew her own uh, referencing business, founded her own referencing referencing business, and uh, grew that, scaled it, and then sold it, and then uh, was the MD of the largest referencing company in the world. Um, also advised by another lady called uh, Tony Lane Cassidy, who's a co-founder of uh, Cointelegraph, uh, BitNation, and um, has advised lots of uh, other credible companies. Great. So you've got, as we'd say, an all-star advisory team, would it be fair to say? <laughs> we think so, certainly, yeah. <laughs> Perfect. And the token structure for the sale, can you speak a little about this, you know, prices, how the tokenomics would work, obviously, you know, whatever you're willing to divulge at this stage? Yeah, sure. i um, happy to, to be fully transparent. Um, we are um, holding a, a token sale next week, on, it begins on, on January 30th, and uh, we're using a um, fairly new um, structure for the sale uh, with uh, decentralized governance of the, the token sale funds similar to the uh, new structure that uh, Vitalik proposed we've, we've actually been working with uh, Fabian uh, quite closely on this um, whereby uh, funds are, are released upon us hitting uh, milestones in our project so mm -hmm. um, if we don't get to the, the main network launch within um, the set time frames then uh, contributors will be uh, due 70% refunds of um, contributions uh, and if we don't get to 10,000 users within the parameters then uh, contributors will be due 30% re refunds so we're making pretty big commitments to people who are backing the project um, the, the price of uh, CBT is um, one dollar thirty, and there are um, some some discounts available for for whitelisters and early contributors. Perfect. So, with regards to the new structure that you're working very closely with Fabian, with um, if you don't hit certain uh, milestones, let's say you would the how how would that work in regards to the customer getting their money back? How, if you could speak a little bit about that, would be great. Yeah, sure. So it's it's built into the the smart contract that the token sale funds are governed by the DAO, which will create, um, in, in which everyone who contributes uh, to the sale will have uh, voting rights within this DAO, mm -hmm. and um, they will vote upon us um, uh, reaching milestones or not. So we'll get a, a consensus from uh, all the contributors uh, which have been involved in, in the sale um, as to whether we've, we've hit the milestone, if uh, they're happy that we have, then we'll move on to the next phase of the project and, and the, the next batch of funds will be released. If they're not happy, then um, the, the smart contract will issue that percentage of refunds to, to contributors. Perfect, gotcha. And um, just kind of on that point there as well, so the, the crowd says is going to be starting on the 30th. Yeah. Um, how, how's the interest going so far? I mean, obviously you said the, the community has been responding quite well to the project and you've really built that up recently. Can you speak a little bit about that? Yeah, yeah, sure. So, um, uh, it's, it's been, uh, it's been fairly, uh, you know, hard work to, to get the project off the ground, um, mm -hmm. last year, um, early last year when we were, um, starting to build our, our community, um, there's there's a lot of uh, noise in this space, and it wasn't it didn't um, you know shoot up immediately. But um, over the last few weeks, it really has been overwhelming. We're uh, we're receiving hundreds of subscribers every day. Our, our Telegram has uh, been going mad. Uh, had to turn off all the no notifications for for everything. <laughs> Telegram because uh, it's yeah the, over the past couple of weeks it's been really amazing and uh, yeah thank you very much to to everyone who's been uh, supporting the project and uh, feeding back to us positive fantastic to hear okay cool so um really quickly then so on your website it says fifty percent of the founders stake in the company's pledge to charity 
Can you speak a little bit about that? Because I was actually quite shocked that um, you made such a such a pledge to the uh, to the charities out there. That's fantastic. And obviously, your background, you've been working with one of the largest non-profit JS charities in the UK. Yeah, yeah, that that's right. So it's um, it's, it's something that's, that's quite important to us. So the uh, um, founders, uh, there's, there's three co-founders of our block. I'm, I'm one of them, uh, and it's um, it's important that the sentiment of the the project is uh, is right and is in line with uh, our vision for what we want to build. So um, we're creating an ecosystem which we think readdresses the the balance in in hiring and. Um, we're, we're trying to give the power back to workers and uh, um, topple the, the very powerful centralized platforms which uh, make far too much money from everybody's work experience data and for, for them searching for jobs. Um, so yeah, we're, we've committed 50% of the, the projects to charity via Founders Pledge. Um, yeah. Perfect. Well, listen, it sounds like you're giving the power back to the people, which is uh, which is great to hear. Um, while we have you on the show, Luke, is there anything you would like to say to the SVK Chris, uh, listeners out there or any announcements you would like to make to us exclusively? Um, I would like to say to, to SVK personally, keep up the good work. We're, we're fans of the show. So, um, yeah, keep doing what you're doing. It's, it's great. Um we are announcing a partnership. I don't know if it's um, gone out live over our social channels, but we're working with uh, a POA, Oracle's POA network, um, and we'll be partnering with them. <clears throat> Excuse me. We're actually um, um, using some of their infrastructure, and uh, they are um, going to be contributing to, to our projects. And, um, yeah, so we're going to be announcing a partnership with Oracle's POA network imminently. Fantastic. Well, thank you so much for making it on the show today, Luke. We really appreciate it. Um, have a great day and good luck with all of your... Well, good luck with the crowd sale. Thanks very much. A big thanks to Luke once again for making it on today's show. If you like what you heard and you're interested to find more about the project, head to www.rblock.co. That's the website. They've got the white paper. They've got a black paper. It's kind of like a pitch deck. A little bit more about the advisors. And they've got some really solid team members on there as well. So if you're interested, check them out. That's a wrap. i got to bounce. Have a fantastic weekend. And we're going to be back tomorrow with a special podcast. And then from there, we're going to be reporting live from San Francisco. And we're going to have a great time. So remember to tweet us at SVK underscore crypto. Email myself, cstory, C-S-T-O-R-R-Y, at svkcrypto.com. Got any questions, you know how to reach us. Have a great day. That's a wrap. You've been listening to an SVK Crypto Podcast original. Follow us on Twitter at SVK underscore crypto. Email us on cstory at svkcrypto.com. Leave us a message on our website, www.svkcrypto.com.